Okay, so the today lecture topic is hypothesis testing. So as you people know that until now we have just covered the portion of descriptive statistics. As in the start of this course, I have already discussed in great detail that there will be two types of statistics. One is descriptive and one is inferential statistics. So hypothesis testing is basically a part of inferential statistics. So what is hypothesis testing? If I generally discuss with you the definition of hypothesis testing, so basically this is an act in statistics whereby an analyst, statistician or business analyst test an assumption regarding a population parameter. The methodology implied by the analyst depend on the nature of the data, use and the reason for the analysis. So basically, when we want to conduct some statistical analysis based on the population data, so population data will be very huge data. We wouldn't be able to inspect, let's suppose, if we want to inspect a specific product in a company, it will be very difficult to inspect each and every product. Maybe they're producing in thousand of those products, so it will be difficult. So, how we will pass the quality of their production? So, you need to randomly select a sample size, a sample from their big population, and then on the basis of their population, you will decide that should we need to accept that production should we need to accept that quality or not. So in this portion, I will discuss the hypothesis testing. We will discuss type 1 error, type 2 error, which is also called in statistic alpha, beta, etc. Then we will take it to the different mode in hypothesis testing, uh, just like the standard normal distributions, student t distribution. Then we will extend it to the f statistic, chi square statistic. And at the end, we will cover the analysis of variance, which is called ANOVA. So, starting from the hypothesis testing logic, hypothesis testing is one of the most commonly used inferential procedures. So, as I already mentioned, that this is an inferential statistic type, a statistical method that uses sample data to evaluate the validity of hypothesis about a population parameter. So, as I already mentioned, that means we wouldn't be able to inspect, we wouldn't be able to check each and every part of that population which is very big, which is very huge. So that is why we will take sample data then and then on the basis of that sample data, we will discuss, we will accept, we will pass the production of a specific company, of a specific uh, production unit or we will reject it. So hypothesis is about a population and predict the expected characteristic of the sample based on the hypothesis. So basically what we will do, we will take a random sample from a population and then we will expect those characteristics and on the basis of those attributes and those expected characteristics, we will uh, discuss the results on the population. So it compares the obtained sample data with the prediction made from the hypothesis. If it is consistent, then the hypothesis is reasonable. If it is not, hypothesis will be rejected. So just want to give you a simple example. Please note this example. For example, a person want to test that a coin or a penny has exactly a 50% chance of landing on head. So basically a coin have two possible outcome. One is head or one is tail. So now the person has exactly a, uh, uh, say that there is a 50% chance then when I flip this coin, 50% chance will be that it will be the number appear, the, the shape appear on the coin or the penny will be a head. So our, in this case, the null hypothesis, because there are two uh, different parts of uh, types of hypothesis testing, one is called null hypothesis and the other is called alternative hypothesis. Null hypothesis means that I say that the, the penny, when I throw it, there is a chance that 50% chance that it will be a head. So in this case, my null hypothesis will be yes. Yes, it will be 50% chance that you will get ahead. So what will be the opposite of this? Basically, alternative hypothesis show an opposite of the null hypothesis. So the alternative hypothesis would be no, it does not land on head. So when it is not land on head, it will be definitely a tail. Mathematically, the null hypothesis would be represented as, so normally we represent null hypothesis with H0, subscript H0, okay? So the probability of this will be, let's suppose, because the probability of getting head is 0.5 and the probability of getting a tail is also 0.5. So the opposite or the alternative hypothesis will be, no, it will not be a head, but it will be a tail. And normally we denote alternative hypothesis with H1 in subscript or we also write HA. 
So you can write it on both ways. And be identical to the null hypothesis, except with the equal sign struck through, meaning that it does not equal 50%. So in null hypothesis, if I just write it, that when we play back in, it will be 100%. There is a chance that it will be the, 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 the uh, null hypothesis. There is a chance that it will be probability will be, it will be 5% or 50% a chance that it will be a head up here. Alternative will be, we normally denote with 1. Alternative will be, no, it will not be equal to head or 0 0.50. So, if it is not 0 0.50, maybe it will be 40%. When you throw 100% a coin, uh, so there will be a chance that 40 times you will get only a head. So, the remaining will be 60% uh, time will that you will get a tail. So, at this way, we will interpret the hypothesis. Let's suppose a random sample of 100 coin flip is taken. And the null hypothesis is then tested. If it is found that the 100 kind flip were distributed as 40 head and 60 tails. So, let's suppose we kind, we random sample because they claim that there is a chance that 50% you will get head and 50% you will get tail. But now, in a sample, we just want to conduct it. Is the claim is right or wrong? So, we just take a random sample of 100 kind flip. So, 100 times we toss the kind. And the null hypothesis is tested. If, if it is found that the 100 kind flip were distributed as 40 head and 60 tail, the analysis would assume that a penny does not have a 50% charge of landing. So, in this case, our null hypothesis is not 50% and would reject the null hypothesis. So, what we will do? Because we found that only 40% ahead appear. So, we will reject our null hypothesis and accept our null hypothesis. So, we will accept this null hypothesis. If on the other hand, there were 44, 48 head and 52 tails, then it is plausible that the kind could be fair and still produce such a result. In case such as this, where the null hypothesis is accepted, the analysts, analysts or the, the person who doing this job state that the difference between the expected results, 50 head and 50 tail, and the observed result, 48 head and 52 tail, is explained by the chance alone. So, at this way, basically, this is just a simple example which I shared with you. So, at this way, you will interpret what is null hypothesis and what is alternative hypothesis. Why we need this hypothesis testing? So, this is very interesting question. What is the purpose? Why we need to conduct this hypothesis testing? So, the purpose of hypothesis testing is to determine whether there is enough statistical evidence in favor of certain belief or hypothesis about a parameter. For example, that most of the people not believing that the COVID-19 is a real pandemic. Let's suppose this is just the general perception about the population of Pakistan, let's suppose. So now we will check because in Pakistan, we have a huge, because Pakistan is a huge populated country, so it will be difficult to ask from every person, they, would you believe on this COVID-19 that it is a real a disease? So, what we will do, we will uh, just take a sample from different location, from different provinces and then on the basis of that, we will say the null hypothesis be, yes, they believe that COVID-19 is a true disease, is a true pandemic, okay? And the alternative will be, no, they not believe, let's suppose. So, when we collect the sample data, so on the basis of that sample data, we will be predicting about the whole Pakistan. So, basically in hypothesis testing, we collect data in a shape of sample size and then they uh, explain the whole behavior of the population. So, there are some more examples I will just mention in order to further clear you the purpose of hypothesis testing. Is there statistical evidence from a random sample of potential customer to support the hypothesis that more than 10 percent of the potential, uh, potential customer will purchase a new product? So, now, at this way, you will interpret the hypothesis to support hypothesis that more than 10 percent. So, how you will write more than 10 percent? Now, this is a little bit sign of alternative hypothesis because I will also discuss with you that in null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis, in null hypothesis, we will use the sign of equality. In null hypothesis, we will use these sign which I will also discuss. We will use the sign equal to greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. And alternative will be the opposite of this sign, not equal to. If it is greater than or equal to, it will be less than, okay, the opposite of this one. If it is less than or equal to, so it will be greater than. 
So always we will use the opposite. If it is equal to, we will say no, this is not equal to. If it is greater than or equal to, so now they say I bought that more than 10 percent of the potential. So this is basically the, the ideology of the alternative hypothesis. In a new drug effective, in a uh, curing a certain disease, a sample of patient is randomly selected. Half of them are given the drug while the other half are given a placebo. Placebo means normal uh, medicine which is not specifically for that uh, disease. So the condition of the patient are then measured and compared. So basically all these are the different purposes for which we will not be able to do a descriptive statistic for this purpose because we need to collect some sample data and then on the basis of that sample data we will decide to accept that statement which they raise for it or we will reject that statement. In order to further clear the example, I am just going to show you a simple example. 